Well, everybody, welcome back to the Trick Podcast. So, Joey and Gosa TV on this beautiful Thanksgiving Day, Thursday, November 26, almost 3 p.m. Pacific, here in the Los Angeles area, Long Beach, California. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to this episode. Happy Thanksgiving, by the way. I'm so thankful for you, most of all, the listener, for your support through the years. I think I've been podcasting now for maybe 15 years. I stopped for a few years. But then I've been back strong for a while now. So thank you. Maybe you were one of those faithful listeners since way back in the day, as they say. Thank you for your support. And again, happy Thanksgiving. You know, today I want to talk about the real meaning of Thanksgiving. We're used to hearing about the real meaning of Christmas. But what about the real meaning of Thanksgiving? In this unique 2020 experience, I think all of us are confronted with what exactly am I thankful for? And of course, we all, spiritually speaking at least, have a lot to be thankful for, right? We can all say, well, my, I'm thankful for my faith, my family, my friends, food and shelter and all the rest. But without spiritually bypassing too much, what exactly are you thankful for? And so I want to just tell you a story Last week, I sent out an email to a few friends from my church asking them to send in just testimonies, stories of why and how they're thankful and what they're thankful for. And I've only gotten a few back, but uh, I'm imagining, you know, people will mostly say, I'm thankful for the church, I'm thankful for my pastor, I'm thankful for my family, for my friends, for my health, and maybe even for, I don't know, Biden or something, <laughs> depending, right? But one of them came from a young person, and I think maybe that's why it surprised me even more, and he began talking kind of about the same stuff, you know, family and friends and country and this, and I must admit, at first I thought, oh, oh this is going to become political, that I'm thankful for freedom, and Trump should be back in power, and I thought, oh boy, I may have to edit this, <laughs> but the video instead mostly talked about a very emotional part of his life, something that really moved me and that literally brought him to tears and it also brought me to tears. And you might be asking, what, what, what is it? What did he talk about? Somebody died, somebody get the virus and recovered? What would happen? No, it wasn't any of that. Did he get a new job, a, a new dog, a, a new house? Nope. He talked about the Great Commission. He talked about the Great Commission, and he talked about being loved even though he is an imperfect man. And, I, I mean, I was just, I'm still flabbergasted by the, the honesty of this young person, the perspective, the maturity. I'm sure he's a Trump supporter. I'm sure that he could have talked about all that's wrong with this country and with this state and the governor and all this stuff. You know, a lot of people are talking about that, especially Christians. And I think that's unfortunate. But what really impressed me and moved me was that he talked about the Great Commission. Now, what does that mean? Well, you know, the way he described it, even that was very moving. He said, it wasn't like, okay, I have to, I should tell my neighbors about Jesus. You know what he said? He said, no one's forcing me to do that. I do it because I love God. And sure, it had a, maybe a hint of you know, freedoms and no one telling me what to do, but I didn't take it as that. I took it as the fact that he feels free because of his faith. That he doesn't love God because someone's telling him to love Jesus, but because he wants to. Because he has been loved by God because he's thankful for all that Jesus has done in his life. And then the second thing was, he said, in spite of how sinful I am, how disobedient I am. And that shows the grace of God. It really, and he began, as I said, to tear up as he was talking about this on the video. By the way, if you want to watch this video, just go on Sunday to ncfbellflower.com slash live or just to my website, davidtrigg.com, and you can watch the, uh, the whole video there. It moved me deeply. And, and, you know, I've been having kind of an up and down week, I'm sure, like most of us. Just not sure. I had a couple of little scares here and there. I thought this and that and some 
nothing's wrong. But my anxious mind sometimes, and my Enneagram 3 mind, tells me that I'm failing at everything, mostly as a pastor, as a leader. And so I blame myself a lot, and that makes me fearful and anxious and blah, blah, blah. So I've been fighting against all those thoughts, plus the usual, you know, virus stuff that's always out there, both as a human being and also as a leader of a church. All the shoulds and could have, would haves and all that stuff. All the things I should do and what I'm not. All the blaming. Anyway, so not to bore you, but when I heard this young man's testimony, it really challenged me, touched me. It gave me a real legitimate, I guess, tactile, physical reason, emotional, spiritual reason to be thankful. Not because I'm doing things for God or, these days, not doing anything for God because what can we do? But, and not because my obedience or because I'm sharing the gospel or preaching the good news or I'm playing music, n none of that. Nothing dealing with what I do. And for the Enneagram 3 type, you know that this is our kryptonite, is doing things to be loved. But instead, this young man reminded me that I am loved by God, and so are you, in, in spite of the things we do and not do. Not because he's forcing us to love him, but I love him because he first loved me, like the Bible says, because he just does love me. And even though this is a message that I share and preach and sing about every day, I have a hard time, like most of us, actually living in that truth that we, that we know. Or maybe you're the opposite. Maybe you have such an experience with God and with peace that you don't really think much about the truth of the gospel, or you have a hard time obeying the gospel. So whatever, however you are dealing with this week, I just want to remind you that the God, the God that loves you, He is the reason for the season of Thanksgiving. Not the God you serve, not the God who even does things for you, not the God who gives you good gifts, all these things that are true. Not the God who provides his beautiful family and your health and your country and your faith and all that. But the God who loves you as you are, not as you should be. Thank you, Brendan Manning, for that. And my friend, my, my young friend on video. I am thankful today because God loves me, even though I can't do much for my church. I am not growing my church by 10 million people. Even though I am not running and losing weight and I'm not succeeding at anything in life, in my, in my eyes. Even though I'm not passing out turkeys today or sharing the gospel with people at the corner store, it doesn't matter to Jesus. He loves me for who I am. He doesn't force me to serve him. He's not pointing a gun at my, at my head saying, you better go and preach the gospel. He loves me. In spite of the fact that I, I have ups and downs like all of us. And that's what motivates me to serve Him and to be thankful this week. And of course, we're all thankful for the fun things. My little dog, my beautiful Daisy our beautiful teens, my lovely wife who supports me so much, my gorgeous mom, and shout out by the way to Michelita and her son, Santiago, who was born just uh, over 24 hours ago. Go so baby. <laughs> and as I said, I thank God for you, for the listeners, the viewers, for the hundred or so subscribers to this podcast. Thank you for your continual support we will not be shaken. I believe that great things will come. And I truly am thankful for 2020 because though there's pain in the night, go so comes in the morning. Make sure that you subscribe, like, share this podcast with your friends, send it to 10 of your friends through text. Just send them a link. And thank you again for being here. Happy Thanksgiving. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. And I will see you next time. Thank you for listening to The David Trick Show. Find the complete archive at davidtrick.com or subscribe for free through the podcast app on iTunes or Stitcher on Android. Each week we bring you a message of joy, success, and personal power in spite of fear, anxiety, and depression. 
Because as we like to say, though there's pain in the night, gozo comes in the morning. <laughs>